We have talked about two building blocks of mechanics of materials, stress and strain. We have learned that stress in, is intensity of internal force in the system, and strain is the, the intensity of internal deformation. In our lecture today, we want to connect these two building blocks together with mechanical properties. The first equation relates normal stress to normal strain. The ratio between stress and strain is called the modulus of elasticity. Similar to that, we can define a relationship between shear stress and shear strain, and that is described as tau is equal to g multiplied by gamma. In addition to that, we talked about the Poisson's ratio. These equations are giving the relationship between the stress and strain. In other words, they are giving us how much would be the strain that is caused by stress or strain that is caused by force. So I'm going to highlight here, these are caused by force. In that case, I'm going to use like this E over here. Can you see that? I'm going to highlight that this strain that we are talking about is the strain that is produced by force, or this is called elastic strain. But deformation is not just caused by force. There are some other factors that are causing deformation, such as can you name like one thing that would cause deformation in elements? Temperature change. What else? Can you mention something else? Like something else that would cause deformation in the element. So have you put any fruit outside and let it dry? What happened to that? It shrinks, right? So this is another thing that, we, that may cause deformation. In engineering, that's actually a big issue for us. Concrete is a material that is made with water, and over time, the water evaporates and it shrinks, and that causes some cracking. So these are examples of deformation. So I just wanted to tell you that deformation is not just caused by force. There are some other factors that are involved. So in our lecture today, in addition to these equations, I want to introduce to you some other equations, the deformation that is caused by the temperature. So these are called thermal effects. And the thermal strain is shown by epsilon. So that is like similar to the strain that we had before. But I'm just going to add one subscript to that and call that epsilon sub t. And that shows the thermal strain. Thermal strain is simply determined by multiplying the temperature change by a constant parameter. That constant parameter depends on the material property. For some materials, like aluminum, it's given to be 23.1 times 10 to the minus 6. For cast iron, is 11.8. So depending on what type of material you work with, that would expand more or less by change in temperature. So knowing how much is the thermal strain, we can determine how much is the thermal deformation. For thermal deformation, we use the same equation as we had in the past. We multiply strain by the length delta or deformation sub t or deformation caused by temperature is equal to strain multiplied by length. So epsilon sub t multiplied by L. And that would give us the thermal deformation alpha delta t L. Alpha is a coefficient of thermal expansion or CTE. The typical values are given in this table. Delta t is the temperature change. Remember, that is the temperature change, not the magnitude or the absolute value of temperature. We need to see how much would be the initial temperature and how much that would change into. And L would be the initial length of the element. So this one is giving us the thermal strain. But how is that related to the elastic strain that we talked about? These two guys are totally independent from each other. Thermal strain is independent from elastic strain. I want to highlight this because this is sometimes confusing. If you want to determine how much is the total strain in the element, that would be sum of thermal strain or epsilon sub t and elastic strain or epsilon sub e. So thermal strain, as we discussed, is alpha delta t. Elastic strain would be stress divided by modulus of elasticity and total strain would be some of these two values. So remember one thing that is very important. If you want to determine how much would be stress, you cannot use the thermal strain and use that into modulus of elasticity equation. These are two independent values, and each of which should be used with appropriate equation. 
We will talk about some of these examples in some problems. I just wanted to introduce the concept of uh, thermal effects.